if you've been watching this vlog for a while, you might remember that we, um, we designed this knee model for teaching to demonstrate the stability of the knee when the ligaments are intact through movement and how you can then um, release the tension on one of the ligaments to simulate injury and then demonstrate the change in stability in a particular direction when you, when you test the knee, right? Students really liked this. We collected feedback. I presented that feedback at a conference in Prague a handful of weeks ago. So I'm working on version two now because we have knee week coming up in six or seven weeks. So from the feedback that we collected, I've got four things I wanna change. One is make a better fibula. They all broke the fibula, or a lot of them did, when they were doing their testing because the infill is too thin. So I'm making a high density infill. Uh, I've got a print over there. It's been printed at 40%, I think. Make it like a better fibula and I've improved that curve there just to make it easier for me to thread. That adhered so well, it pulled the base off. Oh, that's a fresh one as well. What do you reckon? Uh, hmm. Probably need to keep thinking that one, rethinking that one then. A 3D printer prints up in layers. So obviously there's gonna be a weakness between those layers, which is helping it fracture here, right? When you load it on this printer, I'm printing out the tibia and fibula horizontally so that the layers won't be like that, they'll be like that. That is the strongest way to print something. We'll see if that helps. And on this one, I've made a strut. I haven't got the fibula, so I can't demonstrate, but I've put a, uh, a strut down here between the tibia and the fibula, which will make it stronger. So two experiments. We'll let them print overnight and we'll see what works, if either of them works. Okay, the next day, you want to see what's happened? Oh no. I ran out of filament. Oops. The blue one in, that's the, the strut I added is, is in there. So that's a strut I added in software. Obviously it doesn't exist in humans. How strong is it now? Yeah, well, that's a <clears throat> that's a solution then. So I might I might actually go with that because that that's clearly a man-made artifact, right? And that's gonna make it nice and you know, they won't be able to break that when they're they're testing the joints. Let's try the other one. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well. All right, so <laughs> in terms of testing the strength, well, that, that's, it, that's no use at all because it hasn't, hasn't completed, right? But in terms of telling me about printing this bone horizontally, you can see that it's added a lot of work and it's gonna be a real pain in the butt to clean off all that support material. And it's even a pain in the butt to get it off the print bed. I'm, these, this second generation print bed in these printers it adheres really well. Now, back in the day, I used to struggle with getting things to adhere, and now I struggle with getting things to come off the bed. <sighs> there are some other beds you can get which are, they magnetically attach, you take them off after the print and flex them, and these just go ping, theoretically. So maybe I should get some of those, but. Okay then, I think that's the solution. Okay, where are we now? All right, I got printed out two of these in white. 
Let's string these up. Take the broken one apart. So I've, um, instead of having an angle change there, I've just made a straight hole through there. That's <laughs> a lot easier to thread. So these are all easier to thread now. All right, in terms of um, tibia and fibula, That seems all right. That'll be the anterior cruciate ligament. So the anterior cruciate ligament is going to cross over to the tibial, the, the fibular side. So that's going to go in there. Uh, and then the posterior cruciate ligament, well, these, are, these guys obviously cross, so that's going to go in there. So we can put toggles on those. That will be the lateral collateral ligament. And these are the ones that are a little bit fib fiddly to thread because of that, that angle in there. I might need a hook in there to pull it out. Because there's a bit of an angle change because the shape of the bone. Very fiddly, I'm sure I can improve on that. As you can see, I've still only got one colour of cord. I'm looking... Oh, oh, it's got... There we go, I didn't need to use a tool. The reason students want these ligaments in different colours is so they can more easily see which ligament they are loosening um, at each point. That that was their, their main rationale there. And we could, we could talk about each ligament by colour then. Good idea, right? That was the student's idea. I, I haven't found any other cord yet to gain four different colours, um, and actually, so this is like a nylon cord I've used in my garage for <laughs> rigging a pulley system to pull up my kayaks. Um, paracord like this, climber's cord, we use this a lot climbing. I think I might buy some cord like this, it'll be easier to finagle through the holes. You can get it in lots of different colours. You can get it in lots of different diameter. you can get it in every diameter, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten millimetre, whatever you need. So I'll probably buy some of that and string it up. But there we go. I think it's funny that I've ended up here doing things like this. Um, I'm here because, there we go, a functional knee stabilized by the four ligaments, the cruciate ligaments and the collateral ligaments. I'm here because I've always been interested in how the body works. I want to know how everything works. I want to know how the body works. That's what led me through my education. That led me into research, studying a very narrow part of biology. And then becoming a teacher, I love that. I've had to learn how everything works. I'm still learning how everything works. We all are. We don't know how everything works yet, but I love that I have to learn so much. To teach really is to learn twice, or more than twice in my case, most of the time. I really appreciate that over the years I've made use of the latest technologies like websites and blogs which led to YouTube videos and 3D printing to solve problems, to make things, to do things, to make virtual things real. Um, mixed reality, I'm using artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence every day, I'm using ChatGPT to help me plan podcasts, to answer questions, to describe things to me that I don't know, and then I go and check the source. Basically to find out how it can help me and what its limitations are. And I, you've seen I've made mobile apps in the past as well, maybe. All of these things are helping me understand how the world works, and they're keeping me interested as I'm getting older, as I'm, as I'm working through my career, right? Learning is a big thing for humans. Um, it makes us feel good, it makes us feel um, successful and capable when we're able to learn something new and hold on to it and make use of it. And that's what this is. This is not just me helping students learn how the ligaments of the knee work, but this is me understanding how this part of the world works, how 3D printing works, how you can make virtual things and then make them real. Um, I'm understanding how the world works, I'm continuing to learn and I, I need that, that's a big part of who I am.
I'm always learning and I always feel like I don't know anything. <laughs> the more I know, the more I realize I don't know much. But hey, small wins. Mm -hmm.